<laughs> You're welcome, Bill. Okay, so good morning uh, to everyone and welcome uh, to all. So many of us awoke today to a dusting of uh, snow, okay? So that's what happened, right, Rebecca? Not you. You didn't get it, right? I hear that it's just rain out there in Rochester, in the west in Buffalo. No? I got snow. You got snow? All right. No snow in Buffalo. Okay, nice to hear. So I guess the snow that we, some of us woke up to, it's a kind of a reminder of what's to come in the near future. Shorter daylight hours, increased um, um, walking uh, time and uh, in, um, in, in, increased roads and, and sidewalks uh, being a problem. Shorter daylight hours, um, moisture, dirt, which all contribute to added maintenance issues for the floors of our schools, office buildings, et cetera, any businesses. With that in mind, Hill and Marks uh, considered the tasks that all of our critical schools and businesses will be faced with. And in the case of schools of all levels, the end of the year is usually a window of time that these essential facilities can appropriate time to take care of certain project work that they wouldn't be able to spend the necessary time on as if, when the facilities are in full operation. The Christmas holiday break is usually one of those periods where schools can dig in and do the heavy work of floor care. Today, we are proud to have with us and to present a program in, in partnership with one of our premier vendors um, for all uh, categories of janitorial needs, including products and training. Those are the those are uh, the keys: the products and the training. And and you all all the schools and and businesses do supply the labor. Well, it's crazy times, and we know that it's a time of uh, reduced budgets, tightness on labor, and uh, making sure that we have the right products for the right jobs is an important thing. It, it helps us get to a point where in the schools, and those of you that are responsible for those schools and taking care of them, understand better than any of us do the constriction on, on labor and the problems, of the, the budget constrictions, and uh, work doing more with less and getting the job done right. So we believe fully that we have, with the great manufacturing partners that we have, especially someone like Diversi, uh, have the answers to assist you in making um, making it very, um, oh, just just reducing the labor. There, there are products that, and you'll see those, and Luke will go over those that will help you reduce the amount of labor so you can allocate that shorter labor force into uh, other things. So Luke Van Epps is uh, with Diversity, and he, he's going to speak to you regarding the products the processes and support that can help each of you in your appointed tasks. As always, Hill and Marks will be a source of support in all aspects of your needs for product training and problem solving for all of your janitorial needs. So I think you could tell during my quick introduction, the parts that I, I had written out thoughtfully and then read to you. And when I went off script, and I think you could tell those times, but it's because it's a little bit more difficult uh, when when you're not reading it, but um, I think you can tell when when the parts that I'm not reading, you can tell the heart that's in it because we truly believe that our part is being with being a resource and an assistance to our customers, and not just to being bring product and sell product. We're so far more than that. We want to be a fabric of your agencies and your schools. Um, any any of the businesses that are on this call, we just want you to know that we just want to be a part of the solution for you. We want to be the person, the, the face of the person that can you could call, contact, and uh, with any questions or issues that you have. Anything that in your mind that has to do with uh, janitorial services, we're here and we can help you with. And if we can't help you, the specific person that your sales rep knows exactly who to contact. So without further ado, I'm going to hand the program over to Mr. Luke Van Epps, sales executive extraordinaire with uh, Diversity. Luke. All right. Uh Thanks for that uh, great introduction, Alan. Uh, so 
on, on the webinar today, uh, we're going to be focusing on floor care. And really what I wanted to focus on specifically are the products we have in our line and what situation you would want to use those products and the projects you could then accomplish with those products. So um, floor, uh, there's a lot of different categories of floors out there, but today we're going to focus on um, a couple of uh, resilient floors are the uh, are your classic VCT. There's still a lot of VAT out there in the market, but these are uh, your traditional floors. Um, there's still a lot of stone floors out there. Um, wood, every, every school district out there has a gym and it's one of the most important um, community centers uh, for that uh, facility. There's a lot of rubber floors out there and uh, of course concrete. Um, but even, you know, these floor categories broken up into the ca these categories are a lot of different substrates and, you know, matching up uh, the right products to these substrates, the type of foot traffic you have, and just keeping your facility in uh, good condition can be a confusing, um, it can be very confusing with a lot of different products out there, a lot of different manufacturers. Um, I'm going to keep the scope within the uh, diversity line because obviously that's what I know, but um, it is important to match up the right products to the right substrate that you're working with. Um, so really, you know, getting to the resilient floors, um, the uh, um, there's really two thoughts here. There's the scrub and recode and there's the strip and recode. And a lot of people uh, have been moving towards the uh, scrub and recoat in recent years uh, for a lot of different reasons. And one, one of the main reasons is it's a lot quicker. Uh, there's a lot more labor savings and um, you don't have to uh, strip the floor, which is, uh, which is a big win for a lot of people. Um, you, <laughs> but over time, um, the, uh, the amount of finishes can build up over the floor. And, uh, you know, after a while, a new facilities director can come into managing a facility and they have no idea what finish they're laying down on top of. And there might be two or three administrations in that floor. Uh, so, you know, over time, it is a good idea to start that strip and recoat and get it down to the uh, base surface uh, periodically because uh, over time, uh, you you can have adhesion issues and you never know at what layer on that finish you're going to start to have those adhesion issues. Uh, so th this is um, this is um, diversity's uh, full line. And as you can see, I'm not going to uh, focus too much time on it, but we, we have finishes and uh, maintainers and sealers that are meant for uh, conventional machines and for ultra high speed machines. And all of them are meant for different substrates. Uh, so, um, but within, uh, I focus most of my time on schools. So I, uh, I have a few finishes that I really like to focus on specifically. Um, the complete finish, uh, that, that's a finish I would recommend if you're under a, uh, this is our economy finish. So if you're having a lot of uh, budgetary issues and you really, just want to spend the least amount and get finished down. I would uh, that that's the direction I would generally steer you in. Um, it's it's a good finish all around, um, but it um, you know over time it isn't going to have that um, you know it isn't going to have some of that shine that some of these other finishes are going to have, or the shine will fall off a little bit more quickly. Um, but really, the two main finishes that I really think are the uh, are the price to performance to value. They really are in that sweet spot. Uh, the two that I recommend the most are Vectra and High Mileage. Vectra has been around uh, since the 80s and it, it has uh, aged kind of like a fine wine over the years and really has uh, really stuck around with the time. It's, it's really that standard 20% solids. It responds really well to burnishing. It goes down with a great shine and um, it can take a it can take a really good beating um, and it's really uh, proven itself as the workhorse in the education space. High mileage is something if you are really, really focused on a shine when you lay down the floor. Uh, high mileage is 25% uh, solids. 
So it just it goes down a lot shinier. And when you uh, when you burnish it, it uh, it uh, really um, it really pops as well. I I, uh, I included Carefree because Carefree uh, has a uh, it, it's a little more flexible, so it can go down on some substrates that you typically um, wouldn't be able to lay a finish down. And for example, we'll talk about this a little bit more later. But Carefree is a great finish that can uh, actually go down on rubber where none of these other finishes here would be able to do that. Um, and, you know, we talked about um, not only, um, you know, the finish, but you want to periodically strip the floor. And uh, just like uh, I, uh, I have some go-to finishes um, that I re like to recommend, I have some go-to strippers as well. Uh, Bravo 1500, that is the, uh, I would say that is our economy stripper. And uh, if, you know, if you really just want to get the finish off the floor, you know what you're working with, that's uh, that's what you'd really, um, you know, from a price uh, standpoint, that's the direction you want to go in. Um, Pro Strip SE is, uh, is probably the one I like to recommend the most. And I really like to recommend it the most in RTD. Um, and uh, the reason why I like to do that is because the metering tip is inside that device. So when you uh, when you're stripping um, in uh, these five gallon bids, you have to mix the stripper yourself. And a lot of your workers are going to assume that more is better. And we, we've done studies at diversity that says that is absolutely not true. It is uh, these things are formulated to work properly at that right dilution ratio. So when you're using the RTD, um, there's a story about cost savings because you're not having your workforce with the assumption that more is better. And you're getting that proper dilution ratio every time so that uh, stripper is going to do um, the job it was designed to do. Um, so that's really my go to stripper that I recommend uh, on 90 percent of the cases um, that we're going over a, a conventional finish. Uh, the Bravo Power Foam is a uh, specialized stripper. It's meant for baseboards. It foams up so uh, it can strip any um, finish that's accumulated over the baseboards, which tends to happen, especially if you're using a mop and bucket to uh, lay down the finish. Lino Safe is the stripper that you would use on more gentle substrates. So uh, what I mean by gentle substrates is uh, any concrete, rubber, anything along those lines that uh, do not respond well to, uh, you know, getting beat up and um, you would want to use Lino Safe because it's designed specifically to take the finish off the floor, but not harm the substrate underneath. So on top, you know, you've laid down your finish and you're going to have a uh, daily cleaner. And so there's a lot of things that, that you want to keep in mind. One thing is foot traffic. Um, you know, if you have a low foot traffic area, you don't necessarily need the most powerful floor cleaner out there. Uh, the amount of soil load, do you need to disinfect that floor? I know that's a much more, um, uh, that's a much more uh, bigger consideration nowadays. And do you want like a multifunctional cleaner, right? So um, a big part of cost, sa you know, uh, cost savings and bringing your uh, chemical budget under control is bringing your skew count down. So having a cleaner that can do a couple of different things um, really helps bring that skew count down. So th these are uh, these are the greatest hits for me personally. These are what I recommend out there in the field the most. Uh, I would call Stride our economy cleaner. Um, it can go anywhere from uh, one to 256 all the way to one to 750, uh, depending on the soil load. Um, but this is the economy cleaner. This is more of a uh, what I like to call a good time cleaner if it's not getting beat up too much. Um, I would if someone had a much more, uh, you know, heavy foot traffic, I would really encourage them to go up to prominence. Um, prominence is our heavy duty cleaner. It still has that green sealed certification. And um, but even if they needed more than that, if prominence wasn't doing the job, then I would encourage them to go up to GP forward, which is our power cleaner. And uh, getting into uh, some of these other cleaners, uh, I, I would say these guys start to um, these guys start to um, uh, bring into um, 
more of a uh, multi-use role. So Alpha HP, for example, it's it's a great floor cleaner, and at the right uh, dilution ratio, it's a one to sixty-four dilution ratio. It's actually a uh, disinfectant as well. So you can have a great floor cleaner, a multi-surface cleaner, and a floor cleaner all in one. So there's a great opportunity for skew reduction in there. Uh, Revive Plus uh, is a uh, is a really interesting product. Um, it has uh, it actually has polymers inside of it that fill in the cracks of the uh, finish. So if you have a finish that you want to extend the life out of because you don't really have the time or the labor force or the budget to do a strip and recoat, um, Revive might be a good option for you because you're. Uh, you're filling in all the scratches and extending the life out of the uh, out of the finishes because of the polymers that are actually in the revive, and it actually is a good soil remover as well. So it, it's a really good uh, floor cleaner. Um, I've been getting uh, I included Oxivir 516 in here uh, because I've been seeing out there more and more due to the uh, times we're in, people are um, disinfecting their floors more. So what I, what I would, uh, the advice I would give you for that is if you're gonna run Oxivir through an auto scrubber, um, don't just run it normally, flood the floor if you wanna disinfect it and give it the uh, proper dwell time that, you know, that's on the label directions. If you just go through it and use Oxivir, um, you know, normally through an auto scrubber and just suck it up right away, it's not gonna have the proper dwell time and uh, you're throwing your chemical budget out the window. Um, hey, so I, I got a question. Um, sure. From a, from a disinfection, do you recommend uh, Alpha HP or the Oxivir 516 if, if people do want to disinfect floors? Um, so they both, uh, so what most people are concerned about is they're concerned about COVID right now, right? And both of, both Alpha, the one to 64 dilution ratio, and Oxivir both have a claim on uh, on uh, COVID at five minutes. So um, Alpha HP is generally going to be uh, the more economical, um, the uh, you know the more economical um, um, path to go down, uh, especially for floors. I would push people more in that direction. And then I would push them in the direction of Oxivir for all their other uh, disinfecting um, needs. Because while Alpha HP has that five minute kill claim on COVID, all its other kill claims on like neurovirus and uh, you know rhinovirus is at 10 minutes and Oxivir is down at five minutes. So in Alpha, you know, in you know, disinfecting the floor isn't as critical. Uh, there, there isn't as much of a transmission, uh, you know, risk from the floor as there is from other common touch surfaces like doorknobs and, you know, things more at, uh, you know, eye level. So, you know, for floors, I, I would generally push people in the Alpha HP direction. And for all other disinfecting, I would, me personally, I would generally push them in the Oxford direction. All right. So anyways, uh, so moving on to uh, stone and concrete care. So there's really there's really two schools of thought here. Uh, you really want to seal the floor. Uh, concrete and stone in general is a very porous surface. So you really want to seal the floor to protect it from getting any dirt and grimes in the uh, you know in the um, in that porous surface. But if it's already been kind of beat up, you can also grind down a uh, microscopic layer of the uh, surface, uh, not quite microscopic, but a very fine layer of the surface and remove a lot of imperfection. Um, you know, all these scratches and everything that built up over a substrate, whether it's uh, whether it's a substrate itself or whether it's finish, it uh, takes away the gloss level. So, um, you know, really what I like to do with concrete or terrazzo or anything is I like to run through a grinding program to grind the floor down and then I personally like to seal and combine them both. Uh, the, uh, there's a lot of different diamond pads out there now, and Diversity has its own. Uh, it's called the Twister Program, and um, it has four pads in it, and each of the pads have a different diamond size, and you basically are moving through the pads to a smaller and smaller and finer diamond size until you get to the green pad. And once you get to the green pad, you can either um, 
you can either seal the floor at that point and switch to a more traditional pad, or you can leave the floor unsealed and just use that green pad as a daily uh, as a daily cleaner. Um, one thing I like about this system is there's two ways to do it. You can do the immediate method where you just flood an area and you go over the spot 10 times and um, you just work your way through the pads or uh, that's a little labor intensive and everything I'm hearing out there and everything I'm seeing is the uh, labor force is stretched pretty thin right now. So what I would you know, really recommend people to do if they wanted to adopt this is to adopt the gradual method where you would have the floor and all the sealer and everything stripped out and have the bare concrete floor. And then you would just use these pads as your daily cleaning pads and you would just kind of work through them over a 30 day period. So you would spend 30 days as a daily cleaning pad on the red, then move on to the white and so on and so forth. You would get the same results and you would you would just get there over a longer period of time and you would have to deploy uh, you wouldn't have to deploy any uh, additional labor. So um, and then once you once you actually um, uh, once you actually uh, grind down the floor and you have it looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I should mention about the grinding. Uh, let's say let's say um, your gloss level was like uh, you know on a concrete floor like maybe like a one, and uh, having a fresh new floor looking really good with um, the best finish out there freshly burnished is a ten. I would say that grinding the floor and bring it down would bring it from a one to like a six as far as uh, gloss level. So it's not going to real it's really going to improve the pop and you're really going to see a difference but it's not going to quite bring you up to that finish level. So after after you uh after you grind down the floor, you have the option to seal it. And we uh, I have three sealers uh that I, I really recommend. Uh John Crete is a sealer that is designed specifically for concrete and uh, it's designed to get into the pores of concrete and protect it from any dust and grime getting in there and staining that floor. Uh, Fortify does the same thing with concrete, but it uh, casts a wider net. It also does terrazzo and other stone surfaces. Um, Plaza Plus, I would say, is one of the most popular ones out there because it's actually a finish and a sealer combined together. So, well, uh, Fortify and John Crete are gonna have more of a sheen to them uh plaza plus you're going to get more of that traditional shine and uh if that's what you're looking for if you're looking to grind down the floor if you're looking to really make it pop you would grind down the floor with the twister program and then you would seal it with plaza plus and that's how you're going to get uh within the diversity line the most amount of pop out of a concrete floor so hey, Luke, um, yeah just one quick second before you get onto rubber on the yeah. on the concrete and the, and the stone floors those are the, are the products and that's the process. And, and I just wanted to add that the, um, the effect that you get with a ground grinding the concrete or your terrazzo and then putting the proper sealer uh, quickly over, uh, just lightly over it, uh, extends the life of that floor. So you're, you're gonna now remove the, the extra labor over the years of doing finish time after time on a floor like that. So yeah. that's a huge advantage. Yeah, and, and and another another thing to add to um, on that before we move on, um, when I was doing a training uh, at the Twister headquarters, um, they uh, they simulated about fifty years of regular grinding, um, and uh, the amount of uh, the amount of concrete that was taken off the floor was about as thick as uh, half of a penny. So it really is taking a very very light amount off the floor. You're not gonna you're not gonna like grind through your concrete floor. It's really just designed to take a big portion of those imperfection and those scratches out of the floor, so that your floor can reflect light and really pop a lot better because uh, it uh, it's a much more smoother surface. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, move, moving on to rubber floors, uh, we, we've developed a uh, we've developed a um, a comprehensive system for um, maintaining and restora uh, restoring rubber floors. And uh, I'm just going to walk through the process, uh, the products here, real quick. Uh, prominence we touched on earlier. Uh, it's a heavy duty cleaner 
And uh, it's a green seal. It's a pH neutral and green sealed certified cleaner. So it does a good job in being tough on soil, but being gentle on that substrate. Uh, Profi is an excellent cleaner that is designed for rubber. Um, it's really good at, um, this can be used as a daily cleaner or in a uh, scrub and recoat on a, uh, on a rubber floor as well. Uh, it does a really good job at um, um, uh, pulling oils out of the rubber floors and oils are, or rubber floors are very porous. So any oils, anything like that, just really gets sucked into that substrate. So Profi does a great job at pulling that out. Um, WeWax is a uh, is another product. It's uh, it's kind of it's an interesting product. It's designed specifically for rubber, and it's designed um, uh, to work with rubber. It's not quite a finish, but it has some finish qualities. So we talked about Vectra earlier. Vectra has uh, twenty percent solids. If you laid down WeWax straight, it would have about 8% solids. So um, WeWax is a great product that works really well and is uh, designed specifically uh, for rubber. And we'll talk about in the next slide how to uh, actually lay that down. But uh, LinoSafe, uh, you know, we, we talked about strippers earlier. This is exactly the environment where you would want to use LinoSafe on a rubber surface. Um, so. The, those are the products. So how would we actually um, how do we actually restore a uh, rubber floor? So um, I was out in the Syracuse area maybe like six months ago or so, and we we did a rubber gym out there. They had one for the elementary school, and we did we did a strip and recoat. And so we we strip the floor using LinoSafe with a uh, white pad. You want to be you want to use a very uh, actually I'm I'm excuse me it was a green pad. Uh, but you want to use a green pad or softer on these floors. It's a, you know it's a very gentle substrate, and you don't want to beat it up too much. So you want to make sure not only are you using the right products, but you're in you know using the right process. So we we strip the floor in sections uh, using LinoSafe, and then after we sucked up all the slurry, um, we ran the auto scrubber with just water to get rid of any um, anything we might have missed uh, when we sucked up the slurry. And I cannot emphasize how important that second step is to run the auto scrubber with just water. Because if you skip that step, you might have some adhesion issues down the road. Um, so you can lay down, uh, at that point, uh, one, once you do that, you can lay down uh, two to three coats of either WeWax or you can actually lay down carefree. And uh, I mentioned carefree when we were talking about finishes earlier, and I mentioned that carefree can go on a, a wider swath of substrates than um, some of the other finishes there. Uh, so WeWax is an 8% solids, and uh, when you put WeWax on, you're going to get more of a sheen out of the floor, but that rubber floor is going to uh, retain a lot of the uh, properties of a rubber floor. Right, it's going to be the same rubber floor that you would normally have, but it's going to have that protective layer of wee wax that's really built to work with it. <coughs> Carefree uh, has the uh, it, it, it can move around with the rubber, um, but it's more of a finish. It has about double the solids as uh, as the wee wax, so it's going to react. So you're going to know there's a finish, and you're going to kind of feel that there's a finish over the rubber but it still has the uh, flexibility to move with it. So a scrub and recoat, very sim similar process to a strip and recoat. So you would do a strip and recoat, and then the next year you would come back and probably do a scrub and recoat. And so you would just uh, flood the floor with Profi, which is the product I talked about earlier, at uh, six ounce per gallon. And just from there on out, uh, remove the slurry same way. Uh, you'd want to use a uh, either a brush or a, uh, you know, or a, um, a uh, I'm sorry, a white soft bristle brush or a green pad or softer. And and then from step two and three, it's the same as the strip and Rico. And uh, this is a stairwell at a college uh, that, um, that we did out in the Buffalo area. And this is, we did this with the strip and Rico process. So this is the uh, before. Uh, we used a white bristle brush uh, because, you know, there's a lot of crevices, obviously. It's a raised uh, rubber surface. And uh, this is the after with WeWax um, being laid down straight. 
So that's a pretty big, uh, that's a pretty good, nice looking before and after right there. Um, so uh, moving on to the next substrate, this is something, uh, the no maintenance flooring. Uh, this is something that I wanted to mention because I'm seeing this more and more out there. Uh, the no maintenance flooring does need maintenance. Um, and uh, the, the, uh, the steps to either restoring it or taking care of it are very similar to rubber. Uh, as in, uh, but the only, the only difference is instead of using WeWax, you're using a product called uh, no maintenance uh, flooring emulsion. And uh, so what you would do is you would use the no maintenance flooring emulsion uh, to maintain a no maintenance floor with a, uh, you would uh, lay it down with a uh, flat, uh, a flat mop, and then you would just let it air dry. And that has, uh, we talked about this product Revive earlier, how it has uh, some polymers built into it. It's the same with the, uh, it's the same with the no, uh, no emulsion, no maintenance flooring. Uh, it has those polymers built into it. So it'll uh, fill in any scratches that have uh, developed in that uh, factory uh, finish that uh, comes with the no maintenance flooring. If you did want to strip it, uh, you could do that. Uh, you would use Lino Safe. You would use a blue or a green pad, and uh, you would just basically follow the same process that you would follow uh, for the uh, uh, for the rubber floors. Um, you'd want to uh, rinse it off, and uh, you would just really you would just lay down either a carefree or you'd lay down the no maintenance flooring emulsion, um, either or. Um, uh, Mormoleum uh, is another product that I see a fair amount out there. It's a natural fiber product. It's got a great story when it comes to envir uh, you know, its environmental story. Um, there, it's a very similar process to the other two processes I was just talking about. Um, when uh, Mormoleum isn't designed to be a uh, high gloss surface. Um, so if you were to use, um, if you were to go through the process of LinoSafe, you would have the option of using either uh, carefree uh, if you really wanted to strip it down to the surface and build it back up, or you could use uh, no maintenance flooring emulsion uh, to actually just maintain it the same way you would maintain um, the same way you would maintain a no maintenance floor. So it's very similar. Uh, we're specced in with those floors. Um, so these processes uh, with these products have been heavily tested. So that's really why I wanted to just uh, bring that up. Now, <clears throat> um, one one uh, one area that we have uh, diversity and um, Hill of Marks have really led the way in the last few years is bringing um, the bonus system uh, to to the upstate New York New York uh, marketplace, and we've really had a lot of success. Um, we uh, the way we've sold this product out in the marketplace is um, it's it's a different process than a uh, traditional um, you know laying down a wood floor. So we have been doing a demo style where um, the end user that wanted to take a look at the bonus process would go ahead and take in, um, they would go ahead and uh, just uh, purchase the finish required to do the uh, to do the uh, gym floor of their choice. And then uh, the Hill and Marks and uh, diversity team would come in and we'll actually do that. We'll bring in all the tools and everything that you need to accomplish that floor. And we'll train up all your staff on it too. So you can see it um, all the way through. Um, 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 Bona is um, a well-known brand and a well-known name in uh, the wood floor space. Um, they, they're uh, in the NBA, I believe 29 out of 30 uh, courts are using the Bona system. Um, they also are in the NCAA. It was the first system to not only, uh, it's the first finish, uh, is the finish I'm gonna be talking about, it's the first finish to have a green sealed certification and a green guard certification. Uh, I like to point out the green guard certification a lot because uh, the traditional gym floors, the way you lay them down are very dusty unless you're doing you know, it wet style. If you're doing it dry style, it's very dusty. Even, this whole process is dry pretty much throughout. 
and uh, when you're abrading the floor, and uh, it it um, it doesn't kick up a lot of dust, which is uh, really nice. So this is a complete. This isn't just a finish. Uh, this is a complete system. So that system comes with the tools for the abrasion, uh, the tools for maintaining the floors, the finishes, and uh, and the cleaning. So this this is really the process. But let's let's talk about how a day looks if we did a gym floor. Um, let's say we started at, let's say it's a, uh, I'm just throwing out some numbers here. Let's say it's a 5,000 square foot floor and we're starting at 9 a.m. Uh, the nice thing about this system is the abrasion process is so quick. We would have that floor abraded and uh, in probably about an hour, uh, you know, give or take. So that brings us to 10 a.m. Then, then we get the floor cleaned up after that through a couple of different processes. The first process being, um, you see that tool on top, there's a microfiber pad there, there's a dry and a wet one. We would run the dry microfiber pad over the gym. Then we would auto scrub the gym with that gym cleaner. And uh, then finally, uh, as a final pass, we would uh, late, we would uh, run the wet microfiber pad. And all this is designed to get as much dust off the floor as possible, because any dust that's left behind is going to um, mess with the adhesion of the finish to whatever substrate that you're going underneath. So all of that, again, will take another hour maybe. And uh, then from that point on, you're just going to let the gym uh, dry off for a half hour and air dry. And then from that point, you're ready to lay down the finish. And uh, the finish goes quick. For a 5,000 square foot gym, um, that would take, you know, an hour to do one coat. In this system, initially, you're going to be doing two coats. So once you lay down that first coat, you got two to three hours to wait. And then you're ready to lay down your second coat. Most people opt in to laying down the second coat the next day, but if you really got after it in the morning and you got really aggressive, you started off early, it's very, very possible to lay down two coats and complete the gym in one day. So now that you've completed the gym, you've laid down the finish, what, what comes next? Within 24 hours of laying down that second coat, that gym is already ready for normal acti uh, school activity. So the kids can start playing basketball on it. You can hold school assemblies on it or hold gym classes, whatever you're gonna use the gym for, it's ready for it. Um, you know, when you compare that to the, uh, when you compare that to the oil-based process, and I don't even think I've mentioned this, this is a water-based finish that we're uh, putting down. When you compare that to the oil-based product, um, you're looking at th you're looking at 72 hours cure time. You're looking at uh, you're looking at three four days to get it done, and um, that's not even to mention um, the VOCs, uh, which uh, stand for uh, you know uh, volcanic organic compounds. Um, you know that you get out of the oil based. Um, one thing that you may not be aware of: New York State, uh, January 1st is. Um, is requiring the VOCs to be 275 or under for gym floor finishes. That basically pushes pretty much every oil-based gym floor product out of the marketplace. So a lot of schools and a lot of uh, facilities that have been using oil for years are gonna have a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a moment where they're gonna have to start look at new new processes. And I think this is a really, really good uh, take on redoing a gym floor from the ground up. Um, <clears throat> the the finish that I was talking about earlier was Optum. And Optum is uh, really what we like to push. That is when, when I'm saying that, um, you know, uh, Bona is used in the NBA. And uh, if they're using a water-based finish on that NBA court, it is the Optum finish. And the Optum finish has really done well in a lot of school systems up there, up here, because it's such a durable finish. And uh, so that durability allows it to play in a couple of different lanes. If you're looking for a cost-effective uh, finish that to use in your, uh, you know, to use in your um, 
uh, elementary school and maybe skip a couple of years, uh, Optum can do that because it's so durable. But it's so durable and so hard, which means it has excellent gloss retention. So it does a great job at a high school gym where you really are concerned about the pop and the look and the appearance of that because that is your uh, for, uh, community facing um, gym floor. Uh, so th this is the old style of uh, laying down oil and you can see they have the weight on it. Um, and uh, the nice thing about the water based is it doesn't really beat up your body too much because it goes down with the light. It goes down and levels itself because it is water based. So you don't need that hard, um, you know, that hard surface or I'm sorry, that weight, that weighted, um, that weighted T-bar. You just need a lightweight T-bar to lay it down. Um, th these are just some uh, examples of uh, some after shots of some gym floors. This is one I really like to focus on because it really shows how well the uh, water-based finish shows off the money that a lot of schools tend to spend on these uh, really good-looking graphics for the wood floors. And um, if you're using an oil-based, uh, it generally tints it, uh, this orange tint, and this allows that pop and that color to really shine through. So it, here's a couple other we we've, we've done and just to, just to really get a look at um, you know how these floors look um, you know in in the interest of time I'm going to kind of move through but you know one of the things um, you know in the optum is the hardness uh, it's easy to abrade the gloss retention and uh, it, the chemical resistance is really nice too especially when you're opening up a floor to the general public which you know a lot of school gymnasiums aren't just gymnasiums anymore they're quasi uh, community centers for the community now so you get a lot of different activities on these gym floors so having a durable finish is you know a really good way a lot of the labor savings of this product is in the way that we abrade the floor so it's called the multi-disc system and you can see this gentleman abrading the floor he is walking in a normal pace and he has diamond discs on this single disc machine and um, those diamond discs are going to last anywhere from four thousand to six thousand square feet generally it's going to be closer to four thousand on an oil base and closer to six thousand on a water base but if you don't have to stop for 4,000 to 6,000 square feet, that theoretical gym, or that 5,000 square feet gym, uh, theoretical gym that we were talking about earlier, you would just have to walk the, you know, you would just have to walk and not really stop the entire way. And then you would, that's why you would have it done in 45 minutes because there's no stopping and shuffling around with uh, the diamond discs. Um, the Bona multi-disc tool is really how they do this. This just goes on to any single disc machine. This would really be the only capital investment to get into this program. And uh, each of these discs that are on this main disc uh, spin independently. And due to centrifugal force, these things are spinning uh, closer to the speed of uh, a burnishing machine. So while your single disc machine is spinning at you know 175 to 200 RPM, uh, the little guys are spinning closer to 1500 RPM. So, and uh, they're kind of moving randomly. So you get a really good scratch pattern out of that. And that scratch pattern is really good for um, adhesion properties. Uh, this is another powerful slide that I really like to point out. Um, you know, a standard maroon pad, you got to change it um, every 250 square feet. You got to flip it. And so in a 10,000 square foot gym, um, you would have to change um, the pads 30 in stop 39 times versus with the bonus system, you would only have to stop once. Um, so, I mean, that is a big, uh, you know, a labor saving uh, message right there. It really does save a lot of time. So this kind of opens up a lot of, uh, this opens up a lot of things, right? Uh, now you don't have to do your gym in the middle of the summer when you only have, you know, when you have a lot of space. Now you can really fit it into a weekend if you're if you plan well or the Thanksgiving break or over the winter break is very easy to do. It just really makes um, it really makes things a lot more flexible. Another thing, too, that's great about this finish um, is you can actually burnish it. So 
if you got if you did it in the summer and you want to refresh the gym right before the uh, um, basketball season, you have the flexibility with this finish in this program to accomplish that. Now, I'm just going to kind of cruise through this, but uh, I would really recommend uh, if you did adopt this program to adopt the microfiber tools uh, because, you know, we talked about how the finish is harder, uh, which is generally a good thing for gloss retention, but it also keeps a lot of the dust and soil from getting pushed into, um, you know, uh, for example, the, uh, the oil-based finishes are generally softer. So any soil, any dirt, grime gets pushed into it. The water-based, uh, the Optum specifically, is a very hard finish. So you want to, uh, you want to basically um, make sure you're using microfiber on that. And uh, the cleaners are excellent. Um, it comes in a kit and, um, you know, laying down the Optum because you're using that, um, you're using that lightweight T-bar is much easier. So the last thing, and I'm going to touch on this very quickly, is our resilient floor program. This is how you would actually, um, this is how you would actually um, renovate a floor. So if you have an old VCT floor, and it is um, worse for the wear, but you don't have it in your budget to replace it. You just kind of have to live with it. This might be an option for you. Um, what you're doing is you're basically painting on a new floor. So um, you, have the, you have your base colors here, steel gray, fog, warm pewter, and then you have your chips and you chip the floor. And the theory behind the chips is they add a little texture to the chips and they also draw the eye away from any imperfections on the floor. I've seen a lot of schools using their school color in the floor. So they use a neutral color like steel gray or fog or something like that. And then they'll find their school colors in these chips. There's a few more chips that aren't listed here. We have we have a pretty wide selection of chip colors. Um, and then after you would paint on that floor, you would lay down two coats of this resilient finish. This resilient finish is a urethane based finish. So it's much more uh, robust than a traditional uh, floor finish. So what that translates to is one, you're never gonna have to strip your floors. This, this doesn't respond, it is not designed to work with stripping. And two, for three to five years, all you're gonna have to do, depending on foot traffic, all you're gonna have to do is uh, use a neutral cleaner on that floor. Um, so how this process will work, and you can actually see me on my hands and knees, uh, cut, doing the cut in there <laughs> all the way in the back. Um, this, this is an old VAT floor. So how the process works is you're going to strip the floor and you're going to get as much finish off that floor as possible. And then, uh, once it's dry and everything, you're just going to start painting it like you're painting a wall. So you can see the gentleman on the top. He's got a little roller over there and he's rolling along the edges. You can see me down on my hands and knees, um, you know, uh, cutting in with a uh, paintbrush. And then we're just going to have a roller out there and then you just paint it right on the floor. And uh, this is a picture of it. Uh, uh, this is um, a picture of it with it chipped and with everything in it. Now you can see some of the grid lines are there but it's really hard to notice the grid lines because of the chip pattern draws your eye away from that. So it's a pretty good before and after. Um, and once you, once you actually go through the process and lay down the finish, same thing as the gym finish, 24 hours later that, uh, that uh, floor is ready for foot traffic and 48 hours later, it's ready to have furniture moved back on it. Um, uh, just really just going through some before and afters here, and they're pretty dramatic. This is a VCT of a classroom, and then this is the after. It's a ocean blue chipped with uh, just some uh, blue chips that complement it very well. Uh, same thing here, just some before and afters. Uh, but th so th you've seen VCT, but this thing can go over rubber. It can go over wood. The only substrate, it can really go over concrete too. The, uh, the only substrate I've seen it have trouble with and I would discourage you away from uh, is uh, terrazzo, but really anything else, it, it goes over and it goes over well. What, this is a wood floor in a, uh, in a machine shop uh, at a school. And uh, this is a before 
and uh, this is the after. You can still see some of the grids, but it does it does a heck of a job, really just kind of covering things up. Um, this is another wood floor we did. This is the before, and uh, this is a great after. So all the products are green sealed, or I'm sorry, green guard certified. So you're not going to be kicking out any VC. Uh, um, you're not going to be kicking out any uh, strong um, smells while you're doing this. And then uh, you don't have to ever strip the floors again as long as you have this floor down. And uh, you would just maintain those floors with a neutral cleaner afterwards. Um, so really, uh, that is all I have for you guys today. Um, the uh, What I really just wanted to emphasize is Hill and Marks uh, and diversity, but Hill and Marks really brings a lot of value out there. And, uh, you know, we really want to make sure that you're using the right products for the right substrates and the right processes. If you're stripping, if you're taking care of a rubber floor, there are products and processes in place that can really make those surfaces, um, you know, shine and, you know, really um, look their best. And uh, the Hill and Marks people can really be a, a, a source of value to help you figure that out. So thank you guys. And I bring it back to you, Alan, and uh, open it up for questions. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to open it up for questions. I think um, did we see a couple of hands raised in the chat box. Somebody have something? Marie, did Marie, you, did you, you have something? I okay. just wanted to ask about the asbestos on the floors with that floor covering. Yeah, so uh, we, we've uh, we've gotten that question before, and um, so we don't make or can't make any specific claims about encapsulating the asbestos on the floor because we don't have it. Uh, we don't we don't have a third party verification on that. Um, you know, my thought is, you know, you know, if so facto, so, you are covering up that VAT and asbestos in a uh, in a layer. If you're doing if you're doing asbestos, um, if the guidelines, the uh, OSHA guidelines say that it needs to be a wet process throughout when you're stripping the floor and taking all the finish off. So you just need to be very cognizant of that. You don't you want to generally uh, not use a black pad in that situation. You want to use like a green pad or something more gentle. Because you don't want to start script, you know. Normally, when I'm doing a normal VCT, I like to see the scratches on the VCT when I'm doing the floor. Because if I'm seeing scratches on it, I know that I've gotten through all the finish, and I'm not going to have any adhesion issues down the road. But if I'm doing it with asbestos, I generally use a softer pad, like a green pad, make sure it's wet. Uh, so I guess that's a long form answer to your question. We don't have an asbestos claim, but it will cover up the VAT. So that, that's a great um, question. I, I really like that question because it looks like we do need to do a little more research. VAT, vinyl asbestos style, is dangerous. If it gets frayed, if it gets marred or scratched in any way, shape or form, we don't want to be a cause of that. So you do have to definitely strip the floor that's down there before you would put this finish down or just clean it. Yes, you would want you would want to strip you here's the thing you would want to strip it uh, right down to the uh, to the substrate uh, because if there's any adhesion issues down the road underneath this stuff yeah. it's going to it's going to come right up. The good news is though it is a very repairable floor. So you could, if, if you had a, uh, say you had a VCT tile come up like, you know, three years after you laid down the floor, you could rip that VCT tile out, you could plop a new one in place, and then you could paint down the floor and it would look like nothing ever happened and you could just right. find the cheapest VCT tile out there. Right, you can't do that with VAT. So I mean, that, correct. That, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so the, I guess the answer would be, I think, for Marie and for all of us now that it's piqued our interest. So, we want to be sure about that. So, what? you maybe you could oh. refer that to your research and development team and get an answer back to us. Would sure. Uh, yeah, I could get I could get a more detailed and written, um, yeah. you know, procedured answer for that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So one thing that we have seen today, um, you know. Yeah, 
I'll, I'll refer to the fact that I used to be with Diversity years ago, and and um, we were always prided the company always provided itself with, uh, um, or you know felt good about uh, the, the types of products that they put out. Right, first the best uh, floor finish and, and preparations in the industry, and always have been a great floor product. What we're seeing now is an evolution of, of products and processes. What I've just made myself some notes here, watching and listening to your presentation. The evolution of products is, is incredible. And what it, what it means to me is what we said right at the beginning, is that it reduces the amount of labor that, um, besides providing a, a great product, whether it be the Optum in the, in the gyms or the um, uh, the, the grinding of stone floors of all kinds, terrazzo, all sc schools of, of all kinds are, are so many of them have terrazzo floors. And when you can eliminate the fact that many of them do put floor finish on top of them to get a nice shine, um, you can eliminate that completely by doing the taking the step of, of spending the time to grind them properly and then to properly put the uh, the the one or two coats of the thin sealer on it and and that saves you years it could actually be many, numerous years before you'd have to repeat any process like that or you don't even have to repeat that process of grinding you just can take that top off so the point is the evolution of the products and processes affords many advantages to the uh, to your schools to to anybody that does that uh, that has floors, right? We said any place you walk into has got floors. And the question before, I like that question about disinfecting and whether you use the Alpha HP or or Oxivir, et cetera. Uh, we all have talked about this in previous trainings uh, with ourselves or with other manufacturers that that um, it's very difficult to disinfect the floor. Of course, you want to do it in the restrooms, um, but it, it's so difficult because the floors get walked on immediately and, and the, the soil load that comes in from the outside and it's stepped all over the floors, it's very difficult to, to keep them disinfected, although you, you do have to make an effort. So again, the evolution of products and processes has been great. Uh, and uh, we're, we're just happy to be able to have this as i know there's a lot of information that was thrown out there luke it was a very nice presentation we do have that presentation stored now and um we we ask anybody that uh, if you want to refer to that presentation it's accessible to you um if you want to have um a cons consultation mike or any any of the other um schools or or customers that are on and want to uh, talk about it or we have we have the right people and we have the uh, the desire to make your jobs easier it reduces over the time over the long period it reduces the cost of product and it reduces the cost of labor again we're so concerned with uh, reduced staffs now and the and and uh, turnover of staff uh, it's hard. It's hard in the industry, and we recognize that, and we want to be able to help you and have the answers for you. Does anybody else have, does anybody have any questions they'd like to throw out to Luke while we're here? That bon bonus system there for the gym floor, are the disc replaceable for that? Uh, so the, the, disc, the disc itself is, um, that that's a capital expenditure. That disc will last you uh forever the uh so basically you're putting um you're putting a uh, little diamond pads um on a velcro on the bottom of the disc and those little velcro uh diamond pads are lasting that four thousand to six thousand square feet that actual disc itself you once you buy that that'll last you year after year after year after year that is really a one-time purchase okay we also have examples, by the way, we have, um, oh, yeah. we have examples of schools that we have been extremely successful with on the stone floors and, and gym floors, et cetera. We could give you references and, and, uh, you could see, you could take a look or talk to the, uh, the people in charge of those schools as well, yeah. just to find out. And we're like, I, I, I mentioned, I mentioned this at the beginning of the, uh, Bona presentation, but. You know the way we've had a lot of success out there in the marketplace is actually coming out to your facility and doing a gym with you and your staff um and all you would do is you know take on we, we would figure it out you would tell us how much square footage your uh, floor is 
and then uh, we you would purchase the finish and we would bring out all the tools that you would need um, to uh, do the floor and then we'd walk you and your staff through it, um, you know, from start to finish. All the, all the consulting and all of that, uh, the, 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 the um, doing the, doing this, the service and uh, doing the gym or doing the um, stone to start any of the demos, no charge. Yep. It's all part of the service, part of our, uh, our joint effort to help the customer. Kind of proud of the uh, the things that this, that we do as a company and and that you do as as a supplier. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other questions? Any other people want to just say something or show your costumes or anything for the <laughs> holiday, Saint Hallow's Eve? All right. Well, everybody <laughs> enjoy the holiday. Have a safe holiday. Uh, keep your distance. Stay safe, and because uh, the most important thing that we have as a, as a company is each other, it's the people. That's the absolute most important thing. So let's keep everybody safe and uh, have a great holiday and a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend.